Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm finally reviewing the Adam A7X studio monitors that I've been using for the last month. I'm going to be going through all the features and really what I think of them. I'm mainly trying to see whether they would be a good upgrade for you if you have maybe a more affordable pair. Will you notice the difference with these? Or are these a good first pair of studio monitors? These have been my dream studio monitors for a long time and I've always wanted to put them through their paces so I've really given them a good test and I wanted to say I was actually saving up to buy a pair of these but Adam Audio actually sent me a pair last month uh, very kindly. There was no pressure to make a review. I'm choosing to make this review. Uh, they're not paying me to advertise them or say anything positive or negative about the speakers, but I still wanted to say I got these for free just so that we're all on the same page. So I'm going to run down the features and let's take a look at it. The A7X is the 7 inch version in the AX range. So there's a 3 inch, 5, 7 and 8 inch version all priced Accordingly, this is the 7 inch version and it comes in at £450 for a single monitor or £900 for a pair. So they're not cheap, they're a substantial investment for your home studio, bedroom studio or even a professional studio. So I want to try and help you figure out if these are a worthwhile investment for your studio. Let's start with the build quality. So they're a really heavy, rugged unit. They weigh about 20 pounds for a single monitor. When a monitor is nice and heavy, it usually shows that it's gonna handle the sound well. There's not gonna be any silly resonances. The frequency response of the A7X goes from 42 Hertz, handled by these bass ports and the woofer, all the way up to 50,000 Hertz handled by the tweeter. And the crossover is at 2,500 Hertz. So that's the crossover between the woofer and the tweeter. I'm gonna start by just looking at the tweeter because this is the real distinctive part on Adam Audio Monitors. So it's an X-Art tweeter and it's a folded ribbon tweeter. So unlike a dome tweeter, this is actually a folded piece. Having a ribbon tweeter has some distinct advantages over a dome. The first one is that because it's folded, if you were to unfold it, the actual area of that ribbon is much larger than the equivalent area of a dome tweeter. And what this means is that you can have a really great dispersion of the frequencies, so a really wide and detailed soundstage. But secondly, because it's folded, and due to some really careful engineering, it means that the air leaving the tweeter can be moving a lot faster than the tweeter itself is moving, because it sort of sucks air into all the folds. And what this means is that you can have a really immense transient response, a really good dynamic range, and also an extremely low distortion. Usually with a detailed tweeter, they can sound quite brittle and harsh. And that was what I was worried about. But like most people that have tested these, this is just a really clear and detailed tweeter that doesn't fatigue you. So when I'm doing like mixing or even video production and I'm listening to these for like six, seven, eight hours in a day, my ears feel absolutely fine. You're not noticing any ringing or any pain, which is a really, really good thing. And for anyone new to Pro Audio, just so that you don't get caught out by marketing, although these go all the way up to 50,000 hertz, most people can't hear above 20,000, a lot of people can't even hear above 16 or 17,000. So it's not that you're going to hear more in the top end, it's just that because this is designed so well and it's so detailed, in the area that you can hear, you'll just be getting a lot more of a detailed response. Okay, so enough about the tweeter. Moving down the design, we have some really nice engineered angles here, and it takes us to the woofer and the front firing bass ports. So this is handling all the sound below 2,500 hertz, and the crossover on these is handled really well. So often in the more budget or affordable monitors, the crossover range between the woofer and the tweeter, you can almost hear it. It sounds like you're hearing a woofer and a tweeter, and it's very separated and a little bit indistinct. But with these, it's a really nice smooth crossover. You're not noticing a point where it sort of drops off and goes from one to the other, which is really nice. The woofer material is really stiff. It's a sort of carbon composite. So basically it's not flapping around and doing anything silly. It's handling itself the way you'd expect it to. And the way this handles the low end is really, really nice. It might be because of the front firing base ports. So there's two base ports here that help throw some more air and low frequency sound at you. It's good that they're on the front of the monitors for anyone that's new. If they're on the back of the monitors, often if you're in a home studio or the speakers are close to the walls, it can just cause a real muddy, indistinct bass that you may have heard on other monitors. So it's good that the bass ports are on the front. These are also designed really well. In some monitors, if you look into the bass ports, you can see like wires and stuff. These are just really nice black. They're, they look like almost like they go to infinity, which 
is really, really nice. I've got a lot more to say about the bass on these in just a minute when I talk about setting them up and the controls, but overall, I really like it. Moving down, the last design feature on the front, and this is not to be overlooked, the power switch is on the front, which is amazing. Usually you're sort of fumbling around the back trying to, trying to turn it on. Aesthetically, I don't mind it being on the front. Maybe some people do. Overall, the aesthetics of this, you know, it's got that kind of nice industrial vibe or energy to it. I like the way it looks. Um, I've sort of been a fan of these for years, even though I didn't have them. My only issue with the front is this gain dial on the front. It's a continuously rotating dial, so it does lock to zero dB, but then there's no other guides to let you know where you are, and I would prefer that it sort of clicked for 1 dB, 2 dB, that sort of thing, so you really could match them precisely between both pairs. It's a little bit annoying that it has such a smooth and like slick action like that, because in this case I would rather it just clicked and was a little bit more clunky, but it is a really good dial, it's built well, it doesn't feel loose or anything like that. Moving around to the back of the speakers, we have some inputs, and tone controls and the power cords, so power cord plugs in the bottom, really simple. Uh, inputs, we have an unbalanced RCA input and we have a balanced XLR input. So there's no TRS jack input, you'll have to get a cable with XLR, that's very, very common uh, with pro monitors. Every pair of monitors I've used in this room has this low level hiss that I hear from the tweeters, and it's not usually a big problem, uh, but it's just this low-level hiss that I hear all the time. Now with these, I don't hear it at all until I crank the gain all the way up, and then I hear this little bit of hiss come from the tweeters, and that is just excellent. I didn't know that was really possible, because even with my more expensive Dynaudios, the Kali's, the KRK's, they all have this little hiss, and this doesn't seem to have them, so that must be a really nice input, the electronics are good, the tweeter design is good, and you're just getting this pristine quality that I hadn't actually heard before in any sort of budget uh, monitor up to a thousand pounds for a pair. Okay, so moving over to the tone controls, this is to change the frequency balance of the speakers. Uh, we start with a high shelf, so you can add or remove 6 dB, you can make the speakers more smooth depending on your room, or a little bit more bright. There's a low shelf, and this was really interesting. Usually on monitors, when I crank the low shelf, they you know they become really bassy and boomy, but not that accurate. With this one, if you're in a, a big boomy room, you can turn the bass down, that's great. But when you crank it all the way to like plus six, they're no longer the most accurate for mixing and mastering. But sometimes in a production session, especially when you got some, you know, some musicians in the studio, you just want to crank the bass and create that sort of energy and that vibe in the room. And when you crank that to plus six, it absolutely just hits you in the chest. Like you feel this, the air coming out of the speakers is just immense. And, uh, but still held together, which was sort of surprising. So if you really want to hear that 808 like glide under your track, or you want to hear all the details between your kick and your sub, these absolutely have a ton of bass that you can add. And finally, for the tone controls, we have a tweeter level. So it's similar to the high shelf, but this just takes the gain of the whole tweeter and just raises it or lowers it a little bit, depending on your own personal preference and your hearing. However, this isn't all just a, a beaming positive review. There are a few things I, I think I need to mention that are very important. Firstly, this is a pro audio piece of equipment and you have to set it up right. If you're going to invest this much into your studio, and this really is a, a sizable chunk of money to throw at some monitors, you need to make sure you set them up right, get them up to ear height, use stands. So if you're putting them on your table, use something like those isoacoustic stands or, or some homemade stands even, or use floor stands. This doesn't just make them five or 10% better, this changes them dramatically. If I just put these on my desk, and this is a heavy desk here, it's like 65 or 70 kilos, so like 120 pounds or something just in this desk. If I put them straight on this desk and press play, they sound mushy and they sound indistinct. Whereas if I put them even on these cheap ISO stands or even my $50 floor stands, it just transforms the sound to just be so like accurate, so punchy and just brilliant. It clears up all this mush in the mid-range and they start sounding the way that Adam probably wanted them to sound. Furthermore, even if you have a really dialed pair of monitors like this and a good room with loads of acoustic treatment, you're never gonna get an accurate response from them unless you calibrate them. And th this goes whether you're in an untreated bedroom or a pro studio. Whichever room you're in, there's gonna be big dips, peaks, troughs in the frequency spectrum. So what I do to calibrate it is I use a software called Sonarworks, which comes with this microphone. The tests take about 15 to 20 minutes, and basically it does a load of test tones. You measure it around your listening spot, 
and it captures the frequency response of your room, so all of those peaks and dips, and then it applies very careful software filters and EQs to flatten the response, and you can still tailor it to add more or less bass if you want, but it flattens the response out, and I can't describe how amazing this sounded with these with these monitors in particular. It just opened up the sound stage of the tweeter and the bass became absolutely impeccable. You could hear every single detail of the way like an 808 and a kick uh, clashed or combined well. And the way I describe it is an immediate bass response, which sounds a bit silly, but I'll, I'll try to explain myself. It's like whenever there's an issue, you just hear it immediately. There's no mushiness, there's no chewiness. You're just hearing it the way it's meant to be heard. Um, so if your mix is sounding good, these are gonna sound cracking. But if your mix has issues, you're gonna hone in on them right away and you're immediately gonna be able to fix them and actually apply the skills and all the techniques that you've learned. To wrap up my thoughts about these monitors and this review, I wanna say if you do have like a more affordable pair, say you've got a Kali or a KRK, Yamaha, PreSonus, and you want to upgrade to these and you're thinking, will I notice a difference? The answer, as far as I'm aware, is just a straightforward yes. If you invest that much extra money in these, you will get the return on the investment with these monitors. They really do sound good as long as you set them up right. And because I like them and I trust them, I've also got a second pair, a second brand new pair of A7Xs to give away to one of you in the audience. So check the description of this video if you've watched this far. There'll be some information somewhere in the middle or the bottom about how you can enter a giveaway to win a brand new pair of these. And there'll be no like mailing list sign up or anything like that. It'll just be a free entry. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this and I hope to see you in the next one too. Bye for now.